Well, hello and welcome to Always the Wild Ones. If it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee. Yes, yeah, so I am going to show you some of my struggling plants. There are a couple of genus that I do struggle with and then there's one or two other plants that I've just, I've had for long enough to know that we don't seem to get along or yeah, I haven't quite got the care requirements quite right. They're in a terrible state. So I'm going to start off with one genus that, yeah, I really love them. And I kind of know why I struggle with them. And they are the Marant... I think it's called the Marantanasia. Marantanasia. I'll put the correct name up. So yeah, let's start. So this guy, I have had, I'll put the correct name up of this as well because I can never remember its full name. I rescued this plant and I probably had this for about a year and a half, two years. And I don't know, like it's, I've tried it in soil. It's now currently in pond. It did seem to, I mean, to be honest, it looks exactly the same as it did when it was in soil. So I'm going to get in there and show you, like you can see, like there's lots of dead dying leaves inside. Let's see if I can grab one so that you can see. But there's lots of those inside. They're all just kind of buried in there. And then the other thing that I've been having problems with is the tips of the leaves going brown. So now it could be a watering problem because I do tend to underwater and this particular genus I know prefers to stay moist. But on top of that, this could be also a humidity thing. Now I haven't looked at the humidity today, but generally in here it is around, it's between 40 and 60. It can go a little higher in the winter for some reason. I think when it's really rainy as well, it tends to lift the humidity in here. But, oh, and also it's very bright in here. So they kind of live over here, which is the darkest area that I can find, which is another reason why I tend to film here. Um, because it is the darkest area that I can find in my whole home that a Maranta would be happy in, but clearly unhappy. Shame. It's so sad because, I mean, this plant is just, it's so vocal. I mean, it's a prayer plant. And at night, I should have actually taken some photos. Maybe I can do that in time. Um, but at night it stands up, the whole plant just stands up. It looks like, almost like it's, yeah, it looks a little freaked out, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's very active. And I just wish I could master this plant. It was living in the bedroom for a little while and it didn't do much better in there either. And um, it's it's uh, my bedroom only has one window and that's a northwest facing window. Yeah, northwest facing. So yeah, I mean you can see like some of the newer leaves that are looking very happy, but before long I'm sure they'll get the the tip issue. And there's loads and lots of little baby ones inside. But yeah, so that's that one. Very sad. The next one is the Maranta Fascinator. And again, we've got lots of brown crisping leaves. I mean, yeah. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong with this plant. I have had this plant for the longest time. I probably had this one about two years and I will put a photo on the side of what she did look like before I propagated and then she just never recovered and 
I'm now left with this. So attached to this plant. I mean, I really want this plant to be what it was once be before. Like it was just huge. It was just hanging over that pot. I really shouldn't have gone there. And now all I'm getting are these tiny little leaves that come through. The same on the one that I've showed you before. Like they just don't grow to the full size. And I mean, that can be... I mean, it could be that this plant has a pest and I just haven't noticed because that's the only kind of reason you get those tiny, tiny leaves. She does look a bit dusty. I mean, look, these plants are neglected because, I don't know, they're just so fussy. It's hard to be like, you know, want to spend a lot of time on a plant when it's just whatever you do it tends to hate you so again this plant was in soil and it's now in pond it's in your choose a pond I don't know if you can see that but yeah she's has she got any water in there actually I did water her recently no she's run out of water yeah it's probably me I mean, I am kind of like a, a part of me just thinks I need to just find a new home for these plants because they're just so unhappy. They're so, so unhappy. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Surprise, surprise, it's another Miranda. <sighs> um, I don't know what to tell you. I pulled the plant in soil and she was fine. She, I mean, to be honest, I should have just left her alone, but I think I just bought a bag of lechuza pond and I was just like, yes, all my thirsty plants are going in lechuza pond and this plant hated it. And I've now put it back in soil because out of all of them, she this one hated it the most. Uh, yeah, you can see like there's lots of really tiny little leaves growing. Um, yeah, they're just growing in very small and all of them with like this kind of same kind of browning issue. I mean, it's a stunning, stunning plant if you can grow it. I mean, look at that leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? The colours and the veination, the pattern and just... Ah, oh, I just love this plant, but not this particular one. Maybe I just need to admire it in other people's collections. Give me your thoughts, guys. I mean, it's been a while. It's like, how long have I had this one? I don't even know. A year? I'll put the correct amount of time up, but... I don't know, I feel like I've had it long enough to just maybe start looking for a new home for this one. And I have one more Maranta. One more Maranta and this one is in Pond. I actually um, grew this from some cuttings. It is actually doing quite well. This one lives in the hallway. So those three were in my bedroom and they are now in this room and this one lives in the hallway I'll put some b-roll up so that you can see that she has a south east facing window um the sunlight no direct sunlight but definitely nice and bright it does tend to get a bit darker I think around this time which is about four four I think it's about four thirty ish um yeah I don't know I mean this one's doing better to be honest but I'm still getting these awful leaves like these this kind of browning and that that screams out humidity to me this one, let's have a look. Did I water you? It's really hot today, so it wouldn't. Oh, she's got water. I did water this one yesterday, so good. I'm glad it's still got water in the 
in the reservoir. Um, yeah, let me show you actually what I do with my plants in ponds. So although it's in a pot with holes in the bottom, you can see I've got leckables there. And then I've got the pond raised above the leckables. So generally there will be a reservoir of water in this pot that will just stop, which will reach the top of the leckables. And then I'll just wait for it to kind of dry out. And then I try not to let it dry out too much. I mean, I really don't know what to do with this guy. I could try maybe a pebble tray. I really don't want to have humidifiers in my living room because I have like floor, like these kind of, I have these floorboards and they're kind of slippery when they get wet. And I'm just worried that like a whole bunch of humidity is just not gonna be. And also just for myself, like I sitting in a, like a wet kind of environment. I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'll enjoy that. Um, I need plants that can survive in my home with me and that we can all live together <laughs> happily. <laughs> The new leaves actually have absolutely no variegation on them. So yeah, this plant actually isn't as happy. I mean, there's little bits, there's kind of little flicks of white here and there. Woo, you can see it on that one. Um, I haven't had this too long. I mean, it hasn't been a proper plant for that long. Maybe two or three months. So maybe I just need to give it a little more time. Okay, and then I have one more plant from that genus. And surprisingly, well, let me just show you the plant. So it's this guy. Now, this is my um, Stramanthi tricolor. I think that's the correct name. I'll put the correct name up if I missed a bit. I feel like I've missed part of the name. But she is a pretty little thing. I'm looking at her now, she's got one like weird looking leaf. Has she got spider mites or not? No, it's probably just an old leaf. So yeah, I mean, this plant is absolutely gorgeous. And I would say out of all of this genus, this has been the easiest plant. I really neglect this plant. I'm terrible. In the winter, this plant was living in a cold hallway. <gasps> what is that? Um, yeah, it was living in a cold hallway. It was dark out there. There were no plant lights. Um, I barely watered it. And this is what she looks like. So can you imagine if I actually like really gave this the ultimate um, requirements that it really would want? It would look absolutely amazing. I mean, you can see, so I'm struggling to hold it. You can see some browning tips, like here. and But I think that's probably more just me missing watering. I have been trying to be more on top of my watering. Let me see if I can find any more damaged leaves. Yeah, no, she's doing really well. And there's lots of new ones as well, like here. That's a new one. And I saw another one somewhere. Where are you, where are you? This is a new one here. And then there's another one here. Just like they kind of come out like little pencils. I don't know if you can see it, just there. Yeah, so happy. This one is in soil. I've never tried to put it in pond and I don't think I ever will. I basically don't fuss around this plant at all. I, like I said, I'm kind of very laid back with this plant. Oh, I found some more browning. Here we go. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you look really closely, she's not perfect. I mean, it's definitely, you can see, it is a genus that I struggle with. But this is almost bulletproof. I mean, like this plant, I've had this, gosh, I think two years, but maybe longer. I'll put the correct time up and she's still here. And like, I've never had to cut her back or anything like that. This plant has, <clears throat> excuse me, this plant has had, I think thrips. I think um, this type of plant tends to get thrips and you can kind of see the damage. I don't know if you can see that there, like these kind of scratch marks. I think that's what that is. don't think that's spider mine. I think that is definitely like a thrips kind of thing. And I do, I have noticed that um, the Maran, Maran Tanacea and the Syngoniums are quite susceptible to thrips. So that's why you never see any Syngoniums and all my Marantas are far away. Like they're always like either in another room or, you know, they. I tend to keep them at quite a distance. Okay, let me put you back. Did I say how often I'm watering her? I don't think I did. So now that I'm kind of trying to be good, to be a good parent, I'm watering this one once a week and I always bottom water that plant because it's in soil and I don't want any, like anything to lay eggs in the top part of the soil. So I just keep that bit dry. Okay, moving on. Moving on, I'm gonna show you my pink princess. Now, like I said earlier, or maybe I didn't, but I'm gonna say it now. I'm very good with philodendrons, like, yeah, I think I'm all right with them, you know? But my pink princess, I've had this for the longest time. This is probably, um, let me think, I've probably had this about two years. Why are you dripping? That's weird. Yeah, I've had this probably about two years. If I am if I made a mistake, something just flew off it. What is going on? Yeah, I've had it for the longest time and it just hasn't really grown, like its growth pattern. There's actually four plants in this pot. And of course I have put part of this plant through a bit of hell um, with the whole, yay, let's try pawn with absolutely everything. This plant hated it, instantly hated it. All my other philodendrons took to it like a duck to water. But this plant threw a massive hissy fit. Another thing about this, woo, another thing about this plant is it gets spider mite a lot, like a lot. And it wouldn't surprise me if it had it right now. It's looking kind of, I mean, that could just be dust. <laughs> but it could also be spider mite. It really wouldn't surprise me. And you can see quite a bit of damage as well. The lower part of the plant just seems to always want to keep dying. So, I don't know. And when was the last time I got a leaf with some pink on it? Surprisingly, the last time I got a pink leaf from this plant was in the winter. Um, but this plant in the winter was near a plant light. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing stuff flying around. I have to do a full on spraying thing. Yeah, I put this part of this plant in pond. The tallest part um, was always the, the tallest part. It was always like the biggest part. The other sections were pups actually, the two little pieces. I don't know if I can really show you. But yeah, this is one here. So you can see there's one small one right here. And then the other ones here. 
like no I'll try and put a little arrow in or something and then there's these two long ones and if I were to separate it it would probably just be I think one of them just has one two three four five six it just has like six leaves on the top and then the other one just has like just kind of sporadic it's just lost leaves and it's a pain in the butt and it just isn't attractive. Like I'm not drawn to this plant. It's a lot of additional work for very little reward. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? I am kind of trying to propagate it. So I was kind of like, I put some sphagnum moss on one of the nodes to try and instigate some roots. And then hopefully I can chop the top of the plant, which, I mean, to be honest, it's not even that amazing, the top of the plant. Um, yeah, I'm kind of getting to the stage where I might find this plant a new home. And then I also have a white princess philodendron white princess which is currently living in a box i'll put some b-roll up and um this plant oh my god it's so annoying it's just i mean it, it's doing really well now as you can see in the box it looks fantastic but as soon as you take that thing out you're getting yellowing leaves at the bottom and ah she's pretty yeah she's a difficult little princess Moving on, oh my gosh, there's more. Can you actually believe it? I'm gonna take the camera off the stand. I didn't move these plants from their spot because I wanted to show you where they're living. And I will talk you through what's going on with them. I really, I mean, if anything, I'm gonna be asking for advice because I, I don't really know what's going on with them. I've done my very best. Okay, let's turn the camera around. So the next genus that I struggle with is the alocasia. And all of my alocasias are currently living here under this table. There's a plant light on top, but the sunlight does actually pass across the floor here. So it's really lovely light. It's kind of like a dappled afternoon light. And straight away, you can see my alocasia. Um, they call this the dragon scale, but also I think it's called Bagliana, or I'll put the correct name up. Let me drag her out. So yeah, I mean, she looks really cute. I actually bought this from Ikea and it was a much bigger, fuller plant. I'll put some images on the side there. And what you're looking at now is actually some quams that I grew out. And yeah, they're all pups. There were lots of plants in there. I think there's probably about four plants in there. And yeah, the pups have been sizing up quite substantially, like really lovely size. Um, is there one original stem in there? I think there is one original stem in there and I think it's that one and that's its last leaf and this is what I get and I do not know what that is so if anybody can tell me what that is I mean that leaf is on its way out basically this plant gets a lot of spider mite she's currently looking fine I can't see anything dodgy on her yeah but I, every now and then I get just this, like, what is that? Why is that happening? Who knows? Uh, that's a new leaf inside, which is really cute. She's just popped out. I mean, it's not looking too bad. Um, it's in pond and it's got a lovely reservoir of water there at the bottom. Let's spin her around and see what's going on at the back. Oh, we've got another new leaf coming. Okay, so things aren't actually too bad, but I just know that, you know, this plant's probably going to be fine. And then, look, see, that one's on its way out as well. 
Maybe I need to just rotate it more. Yeah, there and here, another one. I really don't know. I mean, it's showing signs that there's a pest on this plant, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Does your alocasias do this? And, you know, what do you do to stop that from happening? I really love this plant. I love the texture of these leaves are just, they're so tough. They're really like, oh, they're just gorgeous. And I mean, they look almost alien-like. And the backs of the leaves are stunning. Okay, let's not look at that one. That's not, not the prettiest one. Let's do this one. Yeah, oh my gosh, look. You can see it on this one as well. What is that? It could be blight, maybe. But yeah, I love this kind of red veination. But yeah, they all have it. They all have it. Oopsie. Not the newest. Okay, not all of them, but a lot of them do. Okay, let's move on. I feel very sad now looking closer. I mean, I try not to look at this plant too closely anymore because I've just learned that I'm going to upset myself. <laughs> right. The next plant I'm going to show you is this guy, also in pond. In fact, all of them are in pond. I only have three alocasias and it's because of this reason that I do not have any more. I'm very tempted to get the fried deck, um, the unvarigated one. I've called it something else now, it's very annoying. But yeah, this, this leaf looks like it's on its way out. And the texture is kind of weird and, I don't know, I mean, it's kind of gravelly or like it feels like it has spider mite, to be honest. But you can kind of see like it's discolored. It's not like, I don't want to touch the other leaf now. But yeah, it's not like that one. But yeah, I mean, I had, yeah, I kind of bought this plant in the winter. So I probably had this plant, let me see, probably got it around November. So I've had it about 10 months. And I went on holiday in January or February and I came back and like it literally every leaf just died. And I think I was left with maybe two leaves. And uh, so like, I am happy to see that it has more leaves, but just recently it has been doing, I don't know doing some weird things is that a new one coming oh the new leaf oh no no no! it's not don't get excited oh that was almost like a new, oh is there anything new happening i think there is something new happening how can i get in there and show you uh... anyway so that's that one um the alocasia bambino next now this one, I actually was given some corms and I was told that they were from a Red Secret, Alocasia Red Secret. And when I first got it, and so they started growing and this is kind of what I was getting, but not any, with no veination at all. It was just like, it was kind of like that and but no venation. I mean they were tiny tiny little leaves and then as it's got bigger it's kind of started doing this so I don't know what is this is this a um I think they call them poly alocasia poly I don't know I mean the stems are looking kind of pink actually they are looking quite pink I guess the more mature she gets, the we're going to have a better way of IDing this plant. But really doing well. I'm really pleased, actually. But there's the spider mite. You can see it. I mean, you can kind of see it. It's... And do you know that that spider mite, when you brush your finger over that, I mean, if it were dust, it would come off, but it's not going to. 
So yeah, I mean, the main reason why I tend to not get on very well with this plant is that I just can't keep, I don't know, I just can't seem to get the, on top of getting rid of spider mite. And they all live together here. I've just recently put my Epipremnum, um, what is that one's name? And Plissimum in the back there and she just threw out a yellow leaf so i'm gonna have to spray that one down because i've got a feeling that that plant now has spider mite but generally they just live down here alone and yeah i just try not to let them touch anyone <laughs> any of the other plants but yeah that is the last that i'm going to show you today uh actually you know what i'm going to just quickly go up here and just show you one plant that i used to struggle with that's doing actually very very well let me grab her out of there oh she's so big now oh my goodness so this is my maranta um sorry my begonia maculata the polka dot and oh i just absolutely love love this plant and for the longest time, look at the red on the back. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. That is what I love the most about this plant. That back is just everything, everything. And the dots, so unique. And the wings, that's, yeah, they kind of come out. The leaves kind of grow almost like a pear. I don't know what's going on with that one. That one just came out, actually. It just kind of unfurled, well, maybe a day or two ago. So hopefully it will flatten out. I don't want to touch the leaves at the moment. But yeah, they kind of do this um, winged effect, which is really cute. And yeah, I had this, I've had this plant for the longest time. I grew it out from like four leaves. And this is what I have now. We've struggled. I've got other parts of this plant in another I've got some in the kitchen actually. I've tried it in soil, tried it in pond, but eventually I discovered that she just likes to be in pure sphagnum moss. I've got like a little reservoir there of lecker balls at the bottom and I just try and she's completely out of water, which is not good. But I tend to try and keep that reservoir full or at least, well, not full, but I mean, I, I tend to water this often enough that there's always a little bit of water left at the bottom. Oh, actually, you can see a little bit. Okay, that's a relief. It's boiling hot today. Let me fill this moss. Still nice and moist. Good. So, yeah, that was that's what she wanted. And I do use fertilised water every time I water this plant. Oh, my God, that red is just nuts. It's just crazy. I mean, it looks like I've messed with the saturation, but I have not. I promise you that is what it's looking like right now. Sorry about all the noise that's going on outside. I can see one kind of old leaf kicking the bucket. It's on its way out. But I mean, the amount of leaves that it has produced and this new, this is a new shoot. So it's it's getting tall. There she is. Oh, she's so cute. I love her. Love this plant. So yeah, that is everybody. Sorry about that noise. There's, I don't know what, I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's always something going on in this area. Anyway, thanks so much for going through that torture of looking at a whole bunch of ugly plants. Yeah, it's very sad. <laughs> but hey, like nobody's perfect. Right? They just don't like it here. So I am gonna try and tough it out maybe and see if I can just do a little bit more research. I'm gonna research a little more on where they come from, what the environment is like and and just what I can do for them 
Now, if it's a matter of me having to get a humidifier, I will be looking for a new home for them because I will not be using a humidifier. Um, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, if you enjoyed the video, do give me a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions, please do leave those in the comments down be below. You can see that I clearly really need some help. And yes, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that. Hit the notification bell because I do do some random videos here and there, but I will always be here on a Sunday, every Sunday. Um, but every now and then I will do an additional video just you know just because <laughs> so yeah thanks again for hanging out have a fabulous week and i will see you here again very soon until then bye